Released in Q2 of 2012, Intel's i7-3770K is now an aging processor, and as a result of this, falls short in performance when compared to many of Intel and AMD's current offerings. Fortunately, this processor is a great overclocker. I've overclocked mine to 4.6 GHz. Keep watching to find out how. Now before we get started, it's important to note that this video is not intended to be a guide. I am simply showing you how I achieved the overclock shown in this video. Therefore, I am not responsible for any damage that may occur as a result of your overclock. Before attempting to overclock any device, you need to understand that, as always with overclocking, there are risks involved, such as, but not limited to, loss of data, voiding of warranties, and failure of hardware. Another important thing to note when it comes to overclocking is that every device is different, even if they're the same model. By this I mean, just because one person achieves a certain overclock on a certain configuration doesn't guarantee that the same configuration would work on a different setup. The setup I'm going to be using features an Intel i7-3770K, which is cooled by one of Corsair's H80 AIO water coolers and inserted into a P8Z77-V Pro motherboard from Asus. This setup also has 32GB of DDR3 2400MHz RAM, two NVIDIA GTX 970s in SLI, and it is powered by an OCZ ZS series 750W power supply. And all of this is encased in the Corsair Carbide series 300R. To overclock my processor, I needed to access the UEFI to change some of the settings. To do this on this motherboard, I needed to press the delete key at just the right time as the computer was starting. To make sure I pressed the delete key at just the right time, I just mashed the delete key until I was into the UEFI. On some motherboards however, the F2 key might be the key to press to get into the UEFI, in which case I would have just mashed that instead. Once in the UEFI, I needed to find the settings to adjust the processor's multiplier and voltages. In my case, this involved going to the advanced mode by clicking it with the mouse, or by pressing F7. Enter advanced mode, OK, and going across one tab to the AI tweaker tab. In the AI tweaker tab, the first thing I changed was the AI overclock tuner settings to XMP. This stands for Extreme Memory Profile. I had to do this because the memory I'm using is 2400 MHz rather than the standard 1333 MHz or 1600 MHz for DDR3. Setting this reveals my memory profiles in the UEFI. So I scrolled down to the XMP profiles and set it to Profile 1. Doing this set my memory frequency to the designed 2400 MHz and the correct voltages and timings for this frequency. Then. I scrolled to the 1 core ratio limit and set it to 39. This sets the CPU frequency to 39 times the BCLK slash PEG frequency. 39 times 100 MHz gives me a frequency of 3900 MHz or 3.9 GHz. This being the turbo frequency of my processor seemed like a good place to start. Having set the processor to a higher than stock clock speed, I needed to tell the motherboard to give the processor some extra voltage. There are a few ways of doing this, but I found through trial and error that the best results are achieved by leaving everything on the stock settings with the exception of changing the CPU voltage to manual mode and specifying the voltage manually. In this case, I manually set the CPU voltage to 1.55 volts, which I believed, if my calculations were correct, to be about the voltage that the CPU would receive at its turbo frequency. In hindsight, however, I probably could have started a bit lower, but either way, it didn't cause me any problems. This was all of the changes that I wanted to make in the UEFI to attempt a clock speed of 3.9GHz, so I went across the tabs to exit, scrolled down to save changes and reset, and when prompted, clicked yes. To save time, I could have clicked F10 to save changes and reset instead. Once the computer had rebooted into Windows, I needed to test the stability of the overclock. So I started up CPU ID HW monitor and proceeded to minimize anything in CPU ID HW monitor that I was not interested in monitoring during my stability testing. This leaves only the CPU information showing. 
To stress and subsequently test the stability of my processor, I started Prime95 and ran a blend test. While Prime95 was running, I kept a close eye on my processor's core temperatures. Ideally, I'd like to keep the temperature under 85 degrees C. Despite the fact that the processor won't start to throttle until 100 degrees C, I feel that it's a good idea for me to give myself a bit of headroom to stay on the safe side. Since my processor is water-cooled, it will take a short while for it to reach its maximum temperature under load conditions. An air cooler would allow the processor to reach the maximum temperature it's going to reach much more quickly than a water cooler would. Anyway, I left the stress test running for about an hour, and the fact that the test was still running on all cores when I came back indicated to me that there were no stability issues with this overclock. As can be seen in HW Monitor, the maximum temperatures that any core reached during this testing was 76 degrees C on core 1. This being below 85 degrees C means that I am satisfied that this overclock is stable and safe. So now I'll restart my computer and head back into the UEFI. Here's an optional step that I chose to take. I went across the tabs to the tool tab and went into Asus OC Profile. In here, I can save all of my settings now that I know that they work. This allows me to quickly switch between settings or easily restore them should the default settings be restored for some reason. All I need to do to save the settings is give the profile a label and enter the number of the profile that I want to save to. In this case, I've simply labelled the profile 39 and selected the next free profile, profile 5. Press enter, save to profile, yes, and you can see that has saved the settings to profile 5. Now back to overclocking. I headed back to the AI Tweaker tab and I scrolled down to the Core 1 Ratio Limit. I changed the value of this from 39 to 40 and changing this to 40 gives me a clock speed of 4000Hz or 4GHz. Having done this, I saved and exited. I didn't change any voltages this time. I won't be doing that unless I run into any stability issues while in Windows or while stress testing. Back into Windows now with Prime95 and HW Monitor running. And same as before, I left these two running for an hour, and when I came back, the test was still running on all of the cores and the temperatures were acceptable according to HW Monitor. This being the case, I considered this a safe and stable overclock, and restarted into UEFI once again. Here, I changed 40 to 41, headed back into Windows, ran the stress test again, everything passed, back into UEFI, 41 to 42, back to Windows, stress, pass, UEFI, 42 to 43, Windows, stress, pass, 43 to 44, stress, pass, 44 to 45, stress, pass, 45 to 46, stress, oh wait. It was at this point that the overclock had become unstable, so I headed back into the UEFI in order to increase the CPU manual voltage uh, with an aim uh, to try and get the overclock to be stable again. With this in mind, I changed 1.155 to 1.16, which still proved to be unstable. So I increased the voltage again from 1.16 to 1.17, and uh, then 1.175, and then 1.18, and then 1.185, and finally 1.19 when I was able to get into Windows and run the stability test, but the overclock still proved to be unstable. So yeah, that didn't work. Uh, back into the UEFI, changed 1.19 volts to 1.195, with uh, the, the, the same results when it came to testing it, actually. So uh, back into the UEFI once again, and change it to 1.2 now. Uh, yes, we're up to that. Uh, and this is where it ends, really. Yes, it, this, this worked. So uh, happy days. But I will say uh, the temperatures were maxing out at 90 degrees, which is higher than I said I'd let it go. So I probably wouldn't keep this uh, for my 24-7 overclock. I'd probably drop down to uh, 4.5, which seemed to be the point in which, well, the limit uh, where, before we had to start increasing the voltage. And actually, I think if I was to stick with 4.5 gigahertz, I would 
see if uh, the overclock was still stable if I lowered the voltage further, uh, which would obviously bring the temperatures down and be all in all safer in that it would reduce the risk of damage to both the motherboard and the processor. That said, in a future video, I intend to look at ways of reducing the temperature of your processor anyway, such as uh, replacing the thermal paste, maybe with something better, or maybe with the same thing, but your old paste might have dried up, who knows? Uh, De-lidding, replacing the water cooler perhaps, if I've got the funding for it. So hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe so you don't miss out on those future videos. And thanks for watching.